Hello and welcome to Access Chat. We're delighted to welcome back a uh, great friend of Access Chat, Kate Nash. Kate is the CEO of My Purple Space, which is the Uber network of employee disability networks and uh, general all round great person, um, angelic even. Um, but uh, Kate today is coming to talk to us about the campaign that she's been running, uh, Purple Light Up, which we're all involved in, um, uh, to celebrate uh, the International Day for Persons with Disabilities on 3rd of December. So Kate, welcome back. It's it's great to see you. Um, tell us a little bit a bit, bit more about how Purple Light Up came into existence. Yeah, surely. Well, firstly, thank you so much for the invitation. It is like coming home to join you guys and of course all of the friends within Axis Chat around the world. So, you know, huge thank you. It's just lovely to be with you. And um, you know, fantastic that technology makes it easier for us all to be in the same room, so to speak. Um, so yeah, a little bit about Purple Light Up and I suppose how how it came about. Um, we we had seen, I suppose, at Purple Space through the work that we do with many, many employers, many networks, many resource groups, that the colour purple was starting to become uh, symbolic, I suppose, um, around the experience of disability. And although it kind of originated in the UK, that's largely irrelevant now because we're seeing again and again and again the colour purple, like our LGBT colleagues who so skillfully use the rainbow flag as emblematic of their experience. Um, so too are disabled people across the globe starting to identify with the colour purple. So it was actually a stray tweet. So how did the purple light up came about? So, you know, we've been around now for three years. We're starting to see this movement. And it was a stray tweet that went out from me um, sort of July of last year that asked the question, is the time now right? Of course, it was in a lot less digits than this, but you get you get the point. So the question was, um, is the time now right to link up a number of things? One, the unity and community that's coming from disabled employee network leaders and their networks and their resource groups across the world. So large, global, um, multinationals, as well as small local organizations so is, is the time now right to really link them up? Two, to link that to the colour purple. And importantly, to find an exciting hook that joins us together around the 3rd of December. Because as we know, the United Nations, I think, did a very fine job of identifying you know, a date, 3rd of December, as a date of focusing our minds on the experience of disability. And although they, again, they skillfully have a theme each year, one of the things that I think has been, has been lacking is a degree of excitement from disabled people around that day, and importantly, the employers who employ us. So that's how it took off. It just ignited a conversation. Um, everybody jumped in, your good selves jumped in, networks jumped in, employers, senior business leaders, um, politicians, and by the time we got to the 3rd of December, we were we were trending. So, we, you know, without doing too much, we could see that this had just really captured. So um, we decided to go bigger, bolder, brighter. That's what we've been doing from the 1st of January. And yeah, I'll tell you more, but that's broadly where it came from. That's broadly where it came from. Well, I can jump myself. Ask a question. Go for it, Antonio. <laughs> so, uh, okay. So, if someone is listening to us now and say, "How can they be part of this? How can they contribute?" You know, not everyone is part of networks. Not everyone is you now connected with organization. But you know, how someone that is at home can be part of what you are trying to achieve here. Yeah, okay. Well, there's some practical bits of information which I'm going to share with you. And before I do that, I'm going to answer it in, in, in a way that I think people will understand. So when we think about disability, often 
we look out in you know the worlds that, that we live in whatever country although we know that the opportunities for disabled people differ from country to country jurisdiction to jurisdiction and so much of our experience of disability this aspect of human difference is predicated it's 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 dependent on the opportunities and those opportunities are often about income you know many of us will live in poverty around the world many of us have not able to procure jobs etc cetera, etc cetera. so you know that those opportunities differ around the world and yet what we see is over i think the last 15 years significant changes have been happened to the employers community and again through the language of disability confidence that's become very popular across the world which is a way of encouraging businesses to do differently and better so too have they been able to engage their own employees and we are seeing again and again through the network through the, re, uh, re, the resource groups a new a fresh and exciting narrative about how we can get on at work how we can lean into our career and how we can celebrate the economic contribution of disabled people because as we know they are working day in and day out and yes more needs to be done in terms of recruitment of course um, but we're now seeing that it's a narrative that's moving away from deficit it's moving away from there are no people in our companies the one that says well yes they are there they may not find it easy to share their experience of disability with the business but more and more we're becoming vocal and vibrant and and I suppose loud and proud to be who we are in the context of work so that's the back I'm going to come back to your to your question so what can people do I think one to notice what it's all about that's you need to feel it this is about celebration this is about capitalizing on a date that binds us as as as, as countries on the 3rd of December and chooses to celebrate rather than focus on deficit um, in order to do that we came up with a, a smorgasbord a shopping list a whole list of ideas about how individuals how organizations and indeed buildings and groups of people can do something to go purple so although yes of course we know and we are sitting on so many secrets and I'm, I'm bursting um <laughs> the corporate secrets and we have to keep those commercial sensitivities and i can see you laughing neil um you know we we know that um many many companies across the world will be going purple and that will be very visible it'll be very uh, it'll be very vibrant but we equally know that there are hundreds of individuals who also want to get involved. So it means simple things. It means maybe dressing up purple. It means maybe having a bake off. You know, if you're if you're if your company can't do that, well, as a team, you might be able to do a little purple bake off and bring in some cakes with purple icing. You might want to face do some face paint. It may be that you simply want to wear some earrings that are purple you know there's lots and lots of simple ways that individuals can just just mark the day um, we got very excited last year many people changed their Facebook profile there's a there's a beautiful already pre-cooked way of changing your Facebook page and and just put a little border a little purple border so many do that many companies may don't not have the budget to light up their buildings per many do um, and many can do so easily, but others can't. And therefore, those companies might simply be changing their Twitter handle purple on the day and following us on Twitter. So lots and lots and lots of ideas. Those are just a few of the some of the ideas. I mean, certainly get onto our uh, website and I'm sure you've got ways of getting those details out, but it's www.purplespace.org forward slash purple hyphen light hyphen up uh, purple light up those hyphens we'll get those to you and then make a pledge we have a pledge page and we're wanting to create a bit of a fanfare because as I say we're hearing constantly of organizations individuals buildings buildings across the world will be going purple so make a pledge however seemingly simple you're joining an exciting movement it's about celebrating this aspect of human difference. 
I talk a lot. Antonio, you asked a simple question and then I went all over the place, but I hope that gives you a little idea of some of the things that you can do to be part of this. And, and, and we're certainly getting engaged and, and involved. I, I know Deborah is a, a Purple Space ambassador. And um, honestly, the, I, oh, I never can fail to think of Ferrero Rocher. A bit of a plug there for some not very good chocolates, but the ambassadors always throw the best parties. So, um, and that, that probably will be lost on you, Deborah, but it's a, a 1980s advert. I'll uh, send you the link to YouTube later. But um, so, so we're getting engaged as well. We're th throwing a, uh, a party with Deborah, the ambassador, um, in our London HQ. We are changing parts of our website purple around the globe. So uh, I'm, I'm excited for that. We really want to support this. And as you say, celebrate the, uh, the fact that we are all different, but talented, and we can do so much stuff together. And and it's not the deficit model, it's, it's actually the, all of the pluses of working together and being part of an inclusive, accepting society. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be part of it, and um, very much um, glad to have the ambassador coming and uh, joining our party. So I'll let Deborah speak. That, that's really funny. <laughs> the way you're saying it, but I really am very proud to be an ambassador for Purple Light Up for the United States. I'm very excited about that. And of course, I'm not gonna just stick to the United States because I, I already have other people that I'm sending to Kate too. But uh, I think you know what ATOS is doing is a great example of what other organizations can do. Corporations, uh, local, national, you know, lighting up your, your statue. There's just so much that can be done, but uh, um, I, Kate, um, will you talk a little bit about some of the countries that participated last year? I know the U.S. is joining this year, and I'm doing my um, best to make sure that I'm getting the world out. We just wrote an article that's going to go out talking about why the U.S. should light up purple in celebration of people with disabilities and the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. But tell us a little bit about what companies did last year. So, you know, and then knowing that because even you know already that the countries that participated last year, but there's a lot more countries participating this year. So maybe you could talk about both of those items. Yeah, absolutely. So, so last year we um we noticed quite quickly that there were parts of the UK that were really going purple. So certainly parts of Yorkshire, uh, parts of the Wirral, uh, Swansea in South Wales. And then we were hearing quite late in the day, because this just catches on. It's you know, a seemingly very simple thing that people can do to celebrate something that is really quite important and, 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 and significant. Um, and then we started to hear of a number of other countries. And again, they were quite simple things. We saw, we saw activity in Australia. We saw activity in Peru and Singapore. And we saw a little bit of the US. So as our US ambassador, we have absolutely no doubt and your support for us and our support to you, Deborah, that we know that you are going to light up the US purple. So there were little bits of different parts of the world. So the British Council, for example, on Twitter, they encouraged you know, Peru and Singapore to get involved. Now this year, we know that we, have got activity across the world. So we are talking to, of course, um, your good selves in the States. We know that there is a particular and very significant building in North America um, that's very tall that will be going uh, purple. Um, we know through a number of our partners, so companies like KPMG, um, EY, PwC, we have support from Barclays, um, you know, good number of multinationals, um, Allegis, you know, there's many that I'm going to, to miss off this list, who are now getting, uh, uh, mobilizing their own people uh, in their DNI teams across, across the world. So we can safely say that this year we're going to have Japan involved, Canada, US, Ireland. I give a nod to your good self and Phineas. We know you have connections there. Um, we will have some activity in Australia, certainly across EMEA, for our friends at Fujitsu, um, India, 
and parts of APAC. So we, and this is, this is, so we did it without too much trying last year. You know, this was just a straight tweet that went out in July. By Christmas, we were trending. And here we are now in October with many, 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 many individuals involved. So we know that it's going to take off. And I know that there'll be lots of companies who I've not listed who are finalising their plans. Um, importantly, I want to come back to some. So what is, is this all glam and glitz and purple shim sham? <laughs> you know, I, you know, we, we like a bit of fun. One of the, the important things about the purple space brand is that we encourage ourselves, we encourage our partners, we encourage our members, we encourage disabled people to notice the good things in life, you know, to 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 be thankful, to you know, not to be overly grateful, but to feel good about about life. You know, it's the experience of disability thing can be so profound, can make uh, you know the best of us you know we can be derailed from the experience whether we feel that personally or through our loved ones or through our colleagues it's it's not a, an experience that you can quickly adapt to um, it takes a lifetime often to make sense of this experience and that means we don't always have the opportunity to celebrate the skills that we learn in conducting our lives as people of difference. And I think what this does is just gives us an opportunity as individuals and as a community to give ourselves a pat on the back. So, so that's really what it's what it's all about. And in practical terms, so coming back to the practicality, so what we're seeing from our partners and our members and businesses across the world, they're using it as a hook. They're using it as a hook. They have you know, Atos has, you know, many of the companies I've mentioned, have always used the 3rd of December, uh, you know, brilliantly choreographed by the United Nations as a way of marking um, the experience of disability. You know, as I say, I don't think it's necessarily had the pizzazz that it deserves. And so what we see now employees do is actually hook in an activity into that. So last year, for example, this is public information. Um, our, our, uh, our members, Barclays Bank, who have done so much in this space, I know they are. They, you know, they have been interviewed and profiled by your good selves. So, but for last year, for example, they launched, they relaunched their Purple Champions program, uh, as did uh, EY. So they have champions across EMEA, individuals who are working in the business, who are looking to support their people to bring their authentic selves to work. So I think what we're seeing is ways in which businesses can actually hook in to the pizzazz that Purple Space brings as a way of engaging their own people and to galvanise them to do something differently and better as they enter the next year. I agree. And I also know that um, Wells is very involved because we have the wonderful Julian Johns is involved and David Perez on my team is getting Costa Rica involved. And I'm hoping that we can get some of the networks of the International Labor Organization, the Global Business Disability Network. They have 26 networks. And so wouldn't it be cool if we could get all those networks to go purple? And then there's 27 multinational corporations, including ATOS and Atos does really amazing things. So sorry to brag about you guys, Neil and Antonio, but we appreciate the leadership that you're constantly showing with this. And I agree with you, Kate. You know, lighting up purple, we're gonna wear purple, we're gonna drink purple cool. You know, I always, you know, purple bows in our hair, but it's a day of celebration and we should celebration. The uniqueness, the abilities, the amazing things that our community brings to the table. And so I appreciate the global leadership and we want to at Rue Global make sure that the Spanish speakers, you know, are being included. And so I, this is a grassroots effort that is growing and growing and growing and it, it's, it's very exciting to see what's happening. So yeah. we're hoping others will participate and join us and, and get really creative and tell us what you're doing with your creations. You know, um, I, I think of the um, ice bucket challenge and how yeah. 
interesting the ice bucket challenge was and how much money was raised for the ice bucket challenge. And so we know things like that that are just sort of silly sometimes things can yeah. turn into really powerful social impact uh, programs. And this is what our hopes are for um, your program, for light, sure. purple light up. Do you know, Deborah, as you say that, you, you remind me of some of the other movements that we see uh, across the world and some of the, the fantastic um, emblems and the, I suppose, the strap lines that often sit behind them and they move over time. You know, the semantics and language changes over time. But, you know, I'm often in discussions with disabled people within networks uh, who start to feeling good about themselves because their businesses are changing policy and practice and procedure. And the more they do that, they're more able to lean into their career. But one of the ongoing conversations is, you know, what is the equivalent of um, the pride movement that our LGBT colleagues, you know, what is the equivalent of the, the, the black is beautiful movement, owning, uh, owning things that have in the past been seen as derogatory. And I think what's hard for us as disabled people is to actually recognize that some of the things that we have to endure, some of the things that we have to learn for ourselves, some of the resilience that we have to build up is hard and it's ongoing. And people often find it hard to feel this human experience and, and call it pride. So what we're seeing, I think, with the Purple Light Up movement is an element of that. It's just an element of recognizing that we have skin in the game and any people movement, any people movement that has flourished has been about individuals themselves who say, actually, that's not good enough. That's not good enough. Not in my name. I need to be part of this. And I think that's what's so fantastic about the business community. Ironically, they've made it easier for their own people to be who they are. So, you know, it's, it's as you say, grassroots. And uh, yeah, we love our ambassadors. Thank you, ambassadors. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's a really deep point that you've made. Uh, I think that businesses have really grasped that they need to do this, not, not just from altruism, but, but because actually diversity is really uh, such a key area for them if they really want to perform uh, and attract talent and retain talent and all of, all of these things. And disability is part of that. You know, we absolutely do need to be part of a movement. So we've seen the growth of, of employee networks. We've seen the, the growth of people coming and advocating. And they've recognized that they need to create these spaces that are welcoming, that are enabling for, for people. And I think that we're, yes, it is our pride in having come through difficult uh, experiences and had to struggle and had to speak up and had to be bold and bolshy sometimes. Um, obviously, we don't want to use the word pride because that's been branded. <laughs> you know? So actually, you know, uh, I, I think it's great that we have our day, but we should be showing our pride. We should be proud of where, where we've got to right now and ambitious for where we want to get to in the future because I think that, that that actually the future is quite bright that I think I feel the last couple of years like there's been a really big shift in in attitudes especially in business towards disability and how we can make stuff more accessible legislation is coming on for sure um, but it's not all about the legislation because legislation's been around for a while and been ignored. But this is actually, you know, organisations are doing things because they recognise the value, and that's different. That that feels different from the last twenty years of working in the space. It, it, it's a, it's definitely a a shift, and I'm 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 excited about that. Anyway, Antonio, I'm hogging the microphone again. I'll hand over to you. I think it, it, it's particularly important that we. Uh, become part of all conversations uh, in general within within society and i think today will be uh, a great opportunity to, for people to express that you know uh, 
more and more often you know, everything that we do it will touch it will touch us that you know in terms of mega trends and social evolution the way how we are going in terms of demographics you know it's something that we need to talk everywhere but what i was going to ask kate is you know you or you already have a very motivated team working with you on this for sure at in your organization so what can you uh tips and suggestions you can you give others to motivate their teams to come on board and join us on this ambassador? Yeah. Well, oh, it's a great question. And you're right, we are a small, but hugely dedicated and committed virtual team as, as you guys and gals are. And so what, what would I, I think my, what I want to say instinctively when you ask that question, Antonio, my answer is, create excitement, create excitement and, and to keep it real. And I suppose what I mean by those two things is sometimes those of us who have worked in disability for a very, very long time, and I, you know, I include myself in that, you know, I, I'm, I'm unashamedly in my mid fifties, uh, my personal experience of disability, for me, arthritis or, or Stills disease, you know, a type of juvenile, chronic uh, rheumatoid arthritis I got when I was 15. So I'm an individual who's lived a relatively okay life with some interesting challenges. And, uh, you know, I, uh, but my point being over time, sometimes we lose the connection about how hard it is as an individual to navigate really difficult life experiences. And it's almost as if over years we've created sometimes maybe a little bit of an industry and because we don't see quite as much change in the speed that we would like, you know, maybe our fire goes out, maybe our passion goes out, maybe we start to think about maybe it is difficult or it is too costly or we are something other than or, 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 or. And, and I, I suppose, you know, what I like to do in all of the things that I've done in my career is to find the passion, is to connect, um, you know, individuals who too are deeply committed to justice. You know, you know what, is, what is justice? The wonderful Susan Scott Parker, when I first met her 25 years ago, we were in a conversation and I, and I remember saying to her, what do you want on your gravestone? I mean, it's not something you say to an amazing woman, you know, if you just met her, I'm talking a long time ago. She said to me one word, justice. I want justice. I want the word justice. And I suppose, how do you, you excite people around a problem? And this problem is this seemingly ridiculous idea that the experience of disability is somehow too costly or something other than, or is ever so slightly different. So how do you excite, you keep it real, you recognize that every person you look at, you look behind the eyes and they will have a story. You know, if it's not themselves personally, it's, it's about their parents who may have dementia. You know, it may be their, their, their brother or sister who they may lost along the way. It may be their, you know, maybe their partner, it may be their line manager, it may be their direct report. You know, we often say one in four, well, it's, statistic that's really ridiculous now and uh, I don't bother keeping up with the stats because I feel pretty certain that every human being will touch the experience of disability and ill health and so again a long answer to your beautiful short question Antonio keep it real keep remembering your higher purpose be prepared to be vulnerable you know, I do that with my team encourage them to be vulnerable but, you know, we're a long time dead. I think we are a long time dead. So we've got to have a lot of fun along the way. You know, we like G&T in the team. Um, and we have a lot of fun the way, but we keep it real. And we recognised our primary job is to excite others around a job of work that needs to be done. Beautiful answer. Yeah, so, um, and there is definitely a job of work to be done, but um, you know, let's roll our collective sleeves up. The, you know, we're definitely up for it. And, and yeah, like you, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. 
that we can. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I honestly believe we can. I love it. But we've all gone yeah. there because we're thinking these. Yeah, oh no, I know. I'm just thinking, I've actually got purple flowers in on my desktop. Keeping the faith. Yeah, yeah, Good we've man. got, we've got, uh, oh, yeah, we've we've got purple lanyards ready for our, our staff as well. So, uh, yeah, we, we're all going purple. You know, I got married in purple, right? I didn't. <laughs> I got married there in green. Go. I got divorced in green as well. And okay. <laughs> well, I'm wearing green today. I hope that doesn't all go <laughs> ba badly for me. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah. so, uh, so no, I, I'm, I'm not afraid to wear purple, so, uh, yeah, I think, no, I think it's great. I yeah. love the color purple, it's so beautiful. Yeah, it is great. You know, we know that there are drinks companies fighting over who's going to come to market with the purple cocktail on the 3rd of December. I know, how good is that? And we also know train station and airports are going to go purple, so we're hoping that... Oh, that's... Just so wonderful. And, and to celebrate people with disabilities all over the world. I mean, what could be better than doing this? And, well, and it's I'm so thinking, easy. Why wouldn't you do it? It's I'm nobody's thinking, asking you to yeah, give any money to do it. Just get involved. Well, I, I, I think we could do with a few kilos of um, a certain brand of milk chocolate as well. That might. I'm saying nothing. There are <laughs> with the name color. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, oh, good. Huge, there's, you know, there's huge commercial advantages for those that are going to come first to market. But yeah. you know, we'll let Atos have it first. <laughs> yeah. But no, there's some great fun that could be had. Yes. No, yes, I, so I, we I'm, should I'm have sure fun with it. Excellent. Uh, obviously, I, 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 as we wind up after uh, this great chat, I need to thank the people that are always here supporting us. So. Thank you to Barclays for their support over the last couple of years. You know, we're we're pretty much at our four year mark now. Um, you know, Congrats. Uh, and also to, to my clear text for helping us with the captions. You'll see in the corner there, Elaine sitting quietly. She's typing away, um, making sure that we can be accessible. So yeah, thank you very much. And thank you, Kate for your leadership and your vision and your energy in um, making all of this happen. Because without your crazy idea in June, one, one afternoon, you know, we wouldn't have this. And um, without your energy to follow it up, you know, we wouldn't be here talking about it now. So thank you, Kate. It's been a pleasure chatting yes, with you again. I'm now the follower. You're the leaders. I no, no, no. We're, you, you are uh, primary into Paris, isn't it? First among equals. Okay. One last shout out. You know, love you guys a bit. Thank you so much for the work that you do for disabled people across the world. You just, I'm so excited that I might get to see Deborah and Antonio before Christmas. I just, whoa. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we I love to get I together. Just, yeah. You know, as I, as I close, I can't help but just big shout out to all of our ambassadors. We we just couldn't have done it without you. So to Deborah and Susan and Martin and Jules and Caroline and Sarah and others. They're, yeah, big high five. Just amazing crew. Just amazing crew. So thank you for letting us talk purple this afternoon. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you very much. Take care.